the heavens are telling of the glory of God. Look up and seek His wisdom from above. Is the Bible really from God? We've provided evidence to believe that there is a God, but this is a Bible study series, so let's get right down to that. Just because someone believes that there is a God doesn't mean that they will automatically believe the Bible. Like the subject of God's existence, evidences for the Bible originating from a divine origin has a lot more material than we're going to be able to cover. However, I don't believe an honest mind needs a library full of evidence to convince him or her. No one has to be bitten by a dog to know that that dog means business. With that in mind, allow me to present some of the evidence of the Bible being the product of divine inspiration. The evidence of prophecy for this study is going to be split between this video and the next two videos. Now, some people believe that the Bible is the product of the human mind, and they try to convince everyone that it's nothing more than a book of myths and legends and tales of superstition. Arguments often rest on questions like, have you ever seen a giant? Or how can someone live to be 969 years old? All of this assumes that everything on earth several thousand years ago was exactly the same as it is now. A nine or 10 foot man is physiologically possible whether any exist today or not. And how long a person lives might be more a question of environmental perfection at that time that may not be so perfect now as everybody is always talking about. So how can we know that the Bible isn't myth or legend? And even more importantly, how can we know that the Bible is actually the mind of God? Well, let's begin by dating the Old Testament. Now, this is important so we know an author didn't claim to predict the future when he actually lived after the event. You know, anyone could say something about the past and then claim to live before it, say he was a prophet, and hundreds of years from now, who would know the difference? Well, all of the Old Testament was actually included in a Greek translation called the Septuagint version. That version, by the way, was in use in the first century. The date of this version, generally accepted as 250 B.C., has been disputed, but not so abruptly as to affect any of the prophecies I'm going to point out in this video. These prophecies were fulfilled in the first century A.D., long after any reasonable date for the Septuagint version. So let's start with when God would actually start or set up his kingdom. The Jews had long awaited the coming of the Messiah, the descendant of David, who was prophesied in 2 Samuel 7. But when would that take place? The prophet Daniel prophesied or pinned down that time by interpreting a dream of King Nebuchadnezzar. And while speaking of the fourth great kingdom after Nebuchadnezzar's, which would be the first kingdom, Daniel said this, And in the days of those kings... The God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. That's in Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44. If we look to history, the fourth kingdom would end up being the Roman Empire. And as we consult the New Testament, we read this in Luke chapter 3 and verse 1. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, these are Roman politicians. And these words describe the time of Jesus' birth. The prophecy of four kingdoms is then repeated in Daniel chapter 7. You know, when you pin down time in a prophecy, you really lay yourself on the line. Daniel did it, and he didn't even bat an eye. Now, the question we're left with is, how did Daniel know that the Messiah's kingdom would be set up during the Fourth World Empire? Knowing that kingdoms come and go on the earth, that's not enough. Getting the timing right was everything, and Daniel nailed it. Well, in our next video, we're going to look at details about where the Messiah would be born and what his position would be. 
That seems like it's not very much, but it actually takes a twist or two that's really very, very important. Well, if you've not yet subscribed and you want to be notified when these videos come out, please hit the subscribe button, and I hope you'll join me in our next video as we look at these additional prophecies of Jesus.